Hi, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, as we're cracking along doing this Vauxhall Viro camper van conversion, I'm going to be fitting in a Chinese diesel heater into the rear of the conversion area just to add that uh, added warmth, especially for those colder winter nights that are starting to encroach on the, onto us at the moment. Now I've fitted a number of these Chinese diesel heaters before and I was hoping to do a similar sort of thing as I did on my last conversion in a VWT4 where I've built very similar sort of kitchen units and in the T4 I managed to get the heater in the bottom of that rear end unit but having been underneath the van there's a lot of suspension components this that the other where I would be wanting to drill the holes through for the heater holes so there's not quite enough space in that rear section so instead I'm going to be fitting it under the bed itself near where I've got the electronics and the batteries and things like that but it's all going to get boxed in separately I'll probably do a little surround going around the heater just so it's basically boxed in on its own as well I'm also going to have to adjust one of the flip uh, flip down fronts for the bed itself I've got these so they fold pretty much flat on the floor just for easy access into the storage under the bed but with the heater needing a hot air vent coming out I'm going to have to have that in some sort of uh, rigid secure sort of boarding so instead I'm going to cut this flap pretty much in half and just have half of it to be able to still fold down but the other half is going to be pretty much statically secured in place and that will allow for the vent for the heater to come out and when the heat is on just fill this entire area with nice warm air the fuel tank I'm going to put the other edge of the uh, storage unit as well near the rear doors so there's going to be easy access to fill up the fuel tank and I'll run the fuel line behind the cupboard and down into where the heat is going to be going now as you can see I've already ran a couple of cables up through the flooring and that goes down and across for the uh, for the hob, for the fridge, for the tap, things like that. And because I've been underneath and I've already fed those cables through I know that this area is pretty much obstruction free. So I should be able to get all of the markings and create the holes required for the inlet and the exhaust for the heater because these need to go through the flooring so the exhaust can then exhaust away from the vehicle itself. Obviously if you had any of those pipes coming inside the van, that's basically just a surefire way to kill yourself with carbon monoxide poisoning and we want to try and avoid that as much as possible really. So we're going to be fitting the heater under the bed, as I say, I'm going to be making some measurements. We need to cut pretty much the same sort of hole size as what this rubber underneath is, so I'll pretty much be using that as a template to be drawn around and cutting out. Once that's out, there's the metal steel plate that secures to the heater and the floor as well. I think that's down at the other end in the box still. But it should be relatively simple and straightforward to get it all fitted in. As I say, I've fitted a number of these heaters in the past. They've always worked fine. I haven't had any issues with them. They seem to be quite nice and reliable units. Obviously, once it's in as well, it means that this entire area is going to be nice and warm come in the winter nights as well. And with the fuel tank at the very rear, it means filling up the fuel tank should be really easy and sim simple and straightforward as well. So let's get cracked out. Let's get some tools out, some safety gear out. Let's get some measurements taken, some uh, markings made on the flooring itself. And as I say, we'll get some holes drilled through. We'll get the entire hole cut out. And then we'll get the heater mounted in. And by the end of this video, we should have a fully, fit fully fitted, fully functional Chinese diesel heater. Right, so with the hole cut for the exhaust and the intake, we now need to take the metal plate that comes with the heater. We secure this onto the base of the heater itself. Which way around does it go? Things like that. Now we secure the heater to the metal plate and then we screw this metal plate onto the floor across where the hole is there as well. So I'll get the plate secured in place with the nuts that come with the kit. As I say, they've just got the four securing bolts that the nuts go on to that secures this plate to make sure that it can't move at all and then we'll get this screwed down into place and then that'll be the heater mounted and then we just gotta go get all the electrics and the plumbing sorted out so let's get this plate mounted and get the heater mounted onto the floor Right, so with the plate attached, I've also connected up the rubber connection for the fuel intake. Some of these heaters come with a more flexible plastic type tubing. This one's came with the nylon type tubing that sits inside a little bit of rubber strip that you just need to cut down to size. And that's also going to get connected onto the connection that goes into the fuel tank as well. 
So with the hole there, as I say, the fuel pipe's going to run behind the little pillar in the bed and it's going to run all the way down to the back, as I say, and the fuel tank's going to sit at the opposite end of that cupboard as well. So the fuel is just going to run all the way down the back there and into the heater here. Now there is one last thing that also needs doing before we secure the heater down onto the floor, and that is connecting the intake and the exhaust, because obviously once the heater's through the floor, trying to get the uh, Jubilee clips tightened up when it's through the floor itself is practically impossible. It might be doable, but oh, I'm, I'm not going to start struggling with anything like that. So as I say, the easiest way is to get them connected up onto the inlet and the exhaust before it's mounted onto the floor. Then we'll just push it all through in one go and then we'll bend up the pipes and get them secured when it's underneath as well. So I'll get these two pipes connected up with the Jubilees onto the uh, inlet and the out exhaust and then we'll get it mounted onto the floor. Right, so with the intake and the exhaust fully secured in place now, it's now a case of getting back inside and doing all the wiring up. So I've been in, I've actually fed the cables going across over the wheel arch. It's coming out and it's feeding up here. And it's just poking out there. And that's where the controller is going to get mounted. Just around about there on the actual uh, side panel so it's going to clear where the bed lifts up for access to the storage and it's going to give easy access to the panel so you can adjust the temperature and also see the time things like that as well for the fuel pump i've got the cable fed down that's where the cable is for the fuel pump and i'm going to have the fuel pump in the bottom of this cupboard area just so it's well out the way of the bed so it's going to be not making quite as much noise or anything like that as you can see i've also got the fuel line fed all the way out because the fuel pump's going to sit in the back of that cupboard and the fuel tank's going to sit here once the rest of the cupboard's actually constructed. So I'm just going to get the screwdriver out, get the control panel screwed up onto the uh, cupboard itself. I say it's going to be mounting round about there. So it's going to give nice easy access to the control unit so you can turn it on and off as and when needed and adjust the temperature if you need to as well. Once that's all wired in, then it's just a case of getting the plumbing done for the uh, fuel tank itself, connecting it up to the battery, and as we can see there's a positive across going across there, it's already fused as well, but it's going to be double fused because not only does it have a fuse on the line, it's also going to get connected up to my fuse box as well. So I'm going to crack on, get the control unit in place, get all the cable and wired up, get the plumbing done for the fuel tank, and give it a test fire. But it's coming along quite nicely, so let's get this all finished off. Right, so now we've got everything connected. I've got the vent fitted into the bed as well, just where the heater is underneath the bed. I've just been out, I've got some diesel fuel as well, so I'm going to fill up the tank and then we're going to give it a test fire. Now on previous uh, tanks for the diesel heaters, I have used the lower mounting point, but for this time around, I've just put a tiny little hole, basically the same diameter as the nylon pipe, just at the very top, and the pipe is then ran all the way to the bottom. And it just means that you can actually use all of the fuel in the tank because if you do start using the notch that's on the tank itself there you're basically not being able to use the bottom quarter of the tank itself which is a bit of a waste of fuel so as i say we're going to get this tank filled up get the lines purged through because obviously it's full of air at the moment so we're going to have to pump the uh, fuel through until it's actually ready then we'll get the heat fired up and give it a test and see what it's like Right, so I'm firing up the heater, but it's going to take a couple of purge runs just because of the length of the nylon fuel line that's going all the way across to the back. Also, this fuel pump in there doesn't actually have any directional markings on it at all. So there's no way of knowing which way to fit it without basically trial and error. And I did try it and it was the wrong way around, but I've swapped it around now and you can probably make out, especially if I put a light on there, but you should be able to see the fuel going through the line now so it's getting pushed down towards the heater but as I say it does have probably about two meters worth of nylon piping 
to actually force the fuel through before it actually starts firing up. So whether it fires up this time or whether it'll kick off and it'll need another little purge through, it shouldn't take too long. I can start to see some of the fuel coming through the line there. So it's slowly, slowly starting to make its way down to the heater itself. But the heater will cut itself off if it doesn't ignite after about 90 seconds worth of trying, just so it doesn't overheat itself or anything like that. If it does cut off, I'll just leave it five minutes and let everything cool down a little bit. Obviously, I don't want to burn out the pump or anything like that either. But with the fuel getting down to here, which is pretty much right next to where the heater is, it should be firing up anytime soon. So I'll pick it back up when it's actually kicking out some heat. Right, on a second run of purging through the fuel system, it's now fully purged and this is now actually working now. That's actually giving out some really nice warm air. You can see on the control unit, that's the inner temperature of the heater. So you can see that's climbing up 86 degrees and so. And I've got the thermostat set to 20 degrees. So if it was left to run just to reach a temperature, it will cut off at 20. But that's getting some really really nice warm air coming out of there now and then if we go around to the exhaust as well you can hear the exhaust that's working as well and again that's really really hot air that's coming out of that exhaust so that's a fully functional fully working fully wired up fully tested chinese diesel heater fitted into this little Vauxhall Vivaro camper van and see so if you have to any of the bits that I've fitted in this van, whether that's the heater, any of the tools I've used, anything like that, check the links beneath the description, uh, in the description beneath the video. That'll go out to eBay where I bought this exact Chinese diesel heater, as well as the tools I normally use for my conversions, as well as everything else that's basically going into this conversion as we go along. But as I say, that's really, really nice hot air that's coming out of there now. So that's fully tested, fully working and one fully fitted Chinese diesel heater into this Vauxhall Vivaro camper van conversion. So I hope you found this video useful, a little bit informative maybe as well. If you did, consider giving it a good old thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing because we're going to be doing pretty much weekly uploads until we get to the very end of this conversion, which as you can see, we are starting to near the end quite closely. But as I say, I'm really, really happy and pleased that this is now fully in, fully working, tested and as I say that's given out some really really nice hot air coming out of that heater so that is the Chinese diesel heater fully fitted in this little box over viral so thanks for watching hopefully I'll see you on next week's episode as we crack on with this conversion as we're getting closer and closer towards completion and say so if you're new consider hitting that subscribe button I do try and do weekly uploads as and where we can especially when there's going to be plenty more projects to come as well so thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you on next week's episode Cheers.